testimony service amongst our Look at your neighbor and tell him, God is awesome. He has done great things. Can you think of the things he's done this morning? We're going to sing about it. We worship you, Lord. We magnify you, oh God. You are an awesome God.
It was their custom. Here's this Barabbas. He's a, he's not just a, a common sinner, but he is a he's a murderer, a thief. He's beat people, hurt them. He's raped and molested. He's done all these things. And here is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And they said, "Give us one." And the the angry cry, cry, uh, mob began to cry, "Give us Barabbas! 
give us Barabbas. It was that day that Jesus stood in Barabbas' place and became that sin. He took your place. He took your place. We are Barabbas. And Jesus stepped into that position and he went all the way to death and to the, to the cross and death and to the belly of hell, church, so that you and I would not have to experience that and that we could have life everlasting. And when he came out of that grave on the third day, he came out victorious with the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And it opened up an opportunity for everyone in this house to be able to receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Woo. You're getting out of here one day. He's coming back. He's coming back and you're going with him. Hallelujah. Praise God. God, he's coming back on those clouds. Hallelujah. Oh, he's coming back. and We're looking for him every day. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to move now into a time of stewards or into a time of prayer. And we've got some needs on the board and we want to pray. Hey, we serve one God. We serve one God, Jesus Christ, where all healing is in his name. Power and authority is in his name. And we're going to pray that name over these. If you see a name on the board. Please pray for them. If you've got a need, come on forward. The ministry will anoint you with oil and pray the prayer of faith over you. And we as a church body, in the mindset of oneness, are going to believe today that you're going to get your healing. I heard of a testimony this week where healing was made 100%. Praise God. And we're going to believe God's going to do it again today as virtue begins to flow. If you got a need, come on forward. As they begin to sing, we're going to go ahead and pray. Lord, we thank you for your power of your name, for the presence that we're feeling in this house right now.
Church family, lift your hands with some of our guests, visitors. Lift your hands and pray with them. <laughs> oh, come on, that's right. There's anointing falling in here. See, we sent it up, and now he's raining back down. And there is anointing flowing in this house. There's a river of water flowing. That's right, go ahead and press. Press on right now. There's no press one on. like our God. There's no one 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 like our God. You are holy, 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 holy. to the equation. I am rich. I am free. Hallelujah. Would you give him a hand clap together right now? Oh, I love to identify with him as my covering. Praise God. The name of Jesus, there's power in it. There's promise. There's provision. There's healing. My God, everything you need, everything you need. And Brother Browder is wrapped up in the Word of God. It's the tree of life. If you'll just get a hold of it, put the other, put that knowledge down. Come on, what a message. What a, what a lesson. Put it down. Just put it down. Come on, man. We're, we don't have to be addicted to that mess. Social media is addicting. It is absolutely no different than a drug or anything else. It's got addicting properties to it. And if you can set it down and pick up the Bible, before you know it, you'll be humbling yourself and praying. Humbling yourself and praying. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves. You know as well as I do that to take time out of your and my busy schedule to actually pray is humbling. It, it is. Because we think we got too much to do. But when we humble ourselves and pray and seek His face, and turn from our wicked way. I don't do anything wicked. Put the knowledge down. That's addiction. It is. We're, we're bigger than that. We're bigger than that. Praise God. And he said, I will heal your land. Praise God. And I believe that. I'm so thankful for the name of Jesus. The power of the name of Jesus. Excellent lesson, Brother Browder. 
We're going to move now to a time of stewardship. And uh, this is a really good time. We're going to, as our ushers prepare, this is a beautiful time to give back to the Lord. We've been worshiping God. You live your life, your week, worshiping God in so many different facets. And now here worshiping Him with our prayer and our praise and hand clapping and singing. Oh, man, we have no idea, really, in the heavenly realm what's going on when we're involved. We get our body and our voice involved. Praise God. And we're doing that. And now it's time for us to get our finances involved. God has given to you, and we want to give back to him what is his first and foremost. And then we also want to give a love offering. Oh, there's power in giving, church. It makes you one with him that says, I'm not hooked on to this money. I can let it go. Because you're my resource. Praise God. Let's also remember today is Project Renew. Project Renew, if you've got a commitment to that, please be mindful of that today. We're so thankful for those that give in this house. We really are. It helps keep things going. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Reverend Gray, would you ask a blessing? He's going to get with it and clap. I'd have stood back there a few minutes. Don't you enjoy our musicians? Man, they do an incredible job. Wonderful leadership. Praise God. We've got such talent in this church. It's, it's been that way the whole 18 years I've been here. There is an amazing uh, flow of talent in this church, and we're thankful for that. Praise God. Don't these young people look good up here worshiping church? Man, I'm telling you, I have a bent toward young people. There's something about it like... You know, we're old enough and bold enough to get up and worship. And we've been through it. But when you got young people just coming into life that haven't really been through a lot, they've been through some stuff. Don't get me wrong. I used to be a youth pastor. I know. But there's something powerful about young people who will stand up in a church and begin to worship and magnify God. They'll be drawn out of the pew. Come on. There's something powerful about it. And I'm so thankful for that. Because there's something going on at home helping them to get out in front here. Praise God. You know, young people, they're under a load. And it's like, hey, I don't want to be out in front of everybody. But there's something powerful. You guys keep worshiping God. Keep on worshiping God. Praise God. Got a few announcements I want to go over. <clears throat> Let's remember the fish fry this coming Sunday. It'll be at 3 p.m. Come on, somebody. Woo. Brother Burns used to do. Woo, come on. <laughs> Praise God. We're looking forward to that. Wonderful fish, wonderful food always, uh, but really the fellowship. That's what we're looking forward to now. It's been asked to just keep it as, as much as we can amongst the church due to the, the time of season that we're in. And <clears throat> so let's let's honor that. I know Facebook is seeing it, um, but let's, let's remember to try to keep it as much in-house as we can just because of, of all the things we've been through in 2020. What a year, huh? Praise God. But God is in control. He's got it all right there in his hand. Uh, there will be trunk or treat on the 31st of October. Um, it's gonna, Yeah, that's right. 
So the plan is, is if you can set up a little uh, display, that's fine. Don't have to have it. We're going to just have a, <clears throat> a day of trunk or treat. Excuse me. For the children, there may be more to come about that, but it's going to be a good time. We're going to have a good time in the Lord. So put that on your calendar, uh, October 31st. Is that right? Did I get that date right? Yes. Okay. Um, also, we've got, now this is, this is the thing I want to take a minute on. We'll move forward, <clears throat> but this is this is pastor. And by the way, they're out today. They're they're preaching in Frierson, in Frierson, in Pulaski for Brother Frierson. And we know that the God is going to bless them. But we want to take a moment today. You, we've we've made you aware of their five year anniversary. Been here five years, and I believe it's November first. Maybe it was the official date. So, given the. The things that we're dealing with right now, we've pushed it out to January 16th and 17th, and that's going to be on a Saturday and Sunday. It's going to be a two-day event, and we've got quite a bit planned for it. And you want to make sure you're here. Everybody in this church that you call him your pastor, we need you to be here. We want to honor this couple. I'm telling you, we, we didn't get to have an installation service because really he didn't want one. He's just that kind of guy. But this is time. We got with him and said, look, five years, we want to do something for you all. And so we honor them, and we've got a budget <clears throat> to take care of. we got a lot of guest speakers, uh, good guest speakers coming in. I believe Brother Court Chavis is going to be over the music. Um, and we've got some other men coming in to preach. I'll, we'll, get with, we'll let you know exactly who later, but you want to be here for this. And so it takes a lot to have something like this. And so we are encouraging the church body out of the flow of the love from your heart. We want to give. We, would, we want a monetary gift is what we're asking for by that weekend. And so we really want you to just seek the Lord about it. Obviously, you can't do more than what you can, but seek the Lord about it. God, what do you want me to give? And reach into your heart, and we want to we want to give to them. I'd love to be able to send them somewhere on a big vacation or something, whatever they want. Because when they take vacations, church, they take a week and they're back in a day or two. Every time. And the main reason, he says, is because we don't feel, if we have such a good church, we, we want to get back. <laughs> we don't feel like we need a vacation. But really, they do, right? They do. They need a good one. They need to, be, they need to go away. They need to spend some time away and just have a moment with them and the Lord. And so we want to honor that. And so anything that you can give between now and then, remember, we need it. We're, we'll set an actual date that we need it, but that weekend is January 16th and 17th. And we would just want to pour it out on them, church. We want to pour love out on this couple. Is that right? Are you with me? Yeah. I knew it. I know you are. So remember that. We're looking forward to a good, good time. We've got some good things scheduled for that service, the Saturday and for the Sunday. And we're going to spend some time honoring them. Praise God. Why don't you right now just lift your hands. We're going to transition into a time. We've got a special up here. But lift your hands and worship the Lord. Little Eliana is going to sing. And let's go ahead and just bring the presence of God down. Come on, lift your voices right now. Hallelujah. Let her feel comfortable.
your healer he's your redeemer he's your way maker and his name is Jesus I said his name is Jesus hallelujah if you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies if you're trying to feel the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need a freedom, a saving. Shaking Savior, you got chains. He's a chain breaker. How many is he? Is he broke your chains today, church? Has he broke those chains on your life? We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same fire. We've all run the thing 
things we know that just ain't right. But there's a better life. Oh, there's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, you need freedom. Well, say you say.
shaking Savior. You got chains. He's a chain breaker. Hallelujah. Somebody testify. Hallelujah. Somebody glorify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. If God has done a miracle in your life, if God has broke change in your life, if God made a way where there seemed to be no other way, somebody ought to testify by lifting up your hands and shouting with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. 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 You don't know like I know what he's done for me. Hallelujah. I come to worship. I come to magnify. And I came to praise the name of the Lord. Can feel yeah. somebody testify. If you believe it. If you receive it. If you can feel it. Somebody testify. If you believe it. If you receive it. Every time I hear that song, I always go back to the story of the demoniac man who had a legion of demons living inside of him. And, they, and the Bible says that they would bind him down with chains and with fetters and that that devil would begin to stir inside of him and he would begin to break the chains and the, the people would come and chain him down again. But then one day this man named Jesus stepped onto the shores and his world would be changed forever. And the Bible says that whenever the people came back and they saw him sitting at the feet of Jesus, and he was clothed and in his right mind, there's something about being in the presence of the Lord. There's something about being in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. That devil broke the spiritual chains, the physical chains, but Jesus came and broke the spiritual. He broke the bondage of sin that had him bound for so many years. There's a better life today. There's a better life. Oh, I feel the Lord right now. I feel the Lord in this place. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God is moving in this place today. God is stirring our hearts today. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to go into the word of the Lord. And I don't plan on bringing you a bunch of knowledge, but I want to bring to you from the tree of life today. And I'm going to go into the book of Mark, chapter number 10. Mark 10, verse 46. And it says, And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging, when he had heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, 
have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And this next part, this is where I'm going to get my title from. And it says, and Jesus stood still. I want to title this message, and I want to preach with the help of the Holy Ghost from this thought. When God stood still. When God stood still. Hallelujah. If we could just lift up our hands one more time. We're going to pray, and we're going to pray for the anointing of the Lord. God, we need you. God, we need you to fill this place today. God, we need your anointing. God, we need somebody's heart to be touched. Uh, God, let it not just come out of my mouth, uh, God, and fall upon deaf ears. But God, let today, let the word of God be sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing asunder both soul and spirit and joint and marrow. Hallelujah. God, let it be today. Let the word of God go forth and let it penetrate into somebody's life and let it transform them in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. We do not serve a stagnant God. We do not serve a God that just sits idle upon a pedestal or on the shelves of our life. We do not serve a God that, that is not active in creation. But we serve a God that holds all power and all authority in his hands and in his voice. The Bible declares him as an omnipotent God. That means that he is all powerful. That lets me know that you go to the very beginning of creation and out of the utterance of his voice that the worlds came into existence. The sun and the moon and the stars and everything just happened all simultaneously. And out of the voice of God, he would begin to speak and, and, and animals and trees would come out of the ground and God would do the miraculous. God is active and he is involved in creation. He is involved in your life today and he is involved in everything that is going on around us. He does not just stand still, but he is forever moving and forever working on people's lives and in their worlds. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible also lets me know that he is omnipresent. That means that he is in all places at all times. There is no place that you can go, that you can run, and you can hide from the presence of God. God is everywhere. You can go to the deep, darkest places of outer space, and God is there. He is Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there with me. He is there everywhere you go. You can lock yourself away in your room, and you can turn the lights out and try to hide away from God, but God is still there. He is ever present with you. He knows everything about you. He knows your thoughts. He knows the intent of your heart. He is omniscient. He knows everything. He knows every thought you have. He knows every secret. He knows your tomorrow. He knows your future. He knows everything and, and you cannot hide it from him. He is all, everything that you need. We do not serve a God that just wants to sit idle upon your life, but he wants to do a work in your life. He wants to change your life. He wants to do the miraculous for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Got to take a breather. Amen. And here, 
God wants to do something with some. And yet God is involved and he is active. I don't believe that there's some there's a theory out that that people believe that when God created, God just let everything happen and he stands back and just lets it go. But no, I believe that God's hands are involved in your life. God is working in your life. He is not just omnipresent, but he is omniscient. He is omnipotent. Everything that you have need of, he has it for you today. There is a storehouse in heaven of blessing that God is just waiting to pour out upon somebody's life today. And, and, and we, we find that Jesus or that God, he does a work throughout history. From the very beginning of time, God has been active and God has been moving. But God wants to get so involved in your life that he decided to robe himself in flesh. The Bible says that without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. For God manifests himself in the flesh. He came in the flesh and dwelt among us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He dwelt among us. He manifests himself and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Hallelujah. The Bible lets us know that hero Israel, the Lord our God, is one Lord. Jesus Christ is that one God. The Bible says in Matthew, it says his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. And when he came to this earth, he came healing the sick. He came to raise the dead. He came and he fed multitudes. He came and he done the miraculous in people's lives. And I just imagine... On this day that I was reading here. Him. Him and his disciples, they would go about and they began to just walk among the crowds. And I just want to use my imagination here for just a moment. But I can just imagine that this whole multitude began to talk about Jesus. Hey, this is Jesus here. You know what I saw Jesus do? What'd you see him do? I saw him heal ten lepers. Oh yeah, you know what I saw him do? I saw him raise somebody back up from the dead. Oh wow, that's incredible. You know what I saw him do? This is what I saw him do. He fed the multitudes. He had two sardines and five biscuits. <laughs> we all had tuna sandwiches. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know how he did it, but, man, he heard. Man, did you hear what I heard? And they were talking about Jesus. They were right there in the middle. But none of them were talking to Jesus. And you have over here on the side, you have little, poor little blind Bartimaeus. He's just a beggar. Has no hope in his life. But you know that one of your senses, when it goes down, that the others increase and you become more keen. So I can just imagine that blind Bartimaeus is hearing is quite well and he hears stories of he healed the leper. He fed the multitude. He walked on water. He did the miraculous. He raised somebody from the dead. He touched a woman with the issue of blood. And you hear all these stories about what Jesus had did. And something would begin to stir inside of him. And he would recognize him as the Messiah. When he would begin to cry out, Jesus, 
Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And the people would begin to tell him, Bart, don't say a word. Don't you realize we're having church right now? We want you to be quiet. We got Jesus here. We got to shh. We're going to talk about him. We're not going to talk to him. All right. But then he couldn't, couldn't get that out of his mind. This is the man that can change me. This is the man that can make a difference in my life. Oh, and it says that whenever the people began to quieten him down, that he began to get a little louder. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I could just imagine. That is, Jesus is walking around, and he's being active, and he began to touch people's lives, and he began to do things in people's lives, and he heard this man call his name out. The Bible said that he stood still. Whoa. Whoa, somebody called me by my name. Somebody recognized who I was. I want you to realize something. He called him the son of David. There's only like three people in the Bible that recognize him as a son of David. You go to Matthew 20, it says that there were two blind men, and they were both calling him the son of David. And they were recognizing him as the Messiah. This is Jehovah that has come down before us. This is him. This is the one that walks on water. This is the one that feeds the multitudes. This is the one that does the miraculous in people's lives. And while God is moving in this house, and we begin to worship, and we begin to praise God, and we, we begin to see the miraculous happen, somebody calls upon God's attention, and everything stops. What just happened? Oh, hallelujah. 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 And what's amazing is that he is still involved. All around this world at the same time. Oh, hallelujah. Today can be your day. Hallelujah. What caused, what was it that caused Jesus to stop? Why did Jesus stop? Everybody around him had to have been saying Jesus. Everybody around him had to be calling upon his name. But there was something about blind Bartimaeus that when he called upon the name of the Lord, that Jesus stopped. And I believe that this is the reason why it was a call of desperation. Because he refused to stay in the same place that he has always been. The Bible says that whenever Jesus stood still, he commanded that you bring him to me. And it says, this is nothing new, so just amen it anyways. It says that he took off his cloak. He took off that thing that identified him as a blind man, as a beggar. He took it off, left it behind, and he said, I'm going to Jesus because I'm not going back the way that I came. I'm not going back the way that I came into this place. Somebody needs to get desperate for God. Somebody needs to get so fire for God that there is nothing that will keep you from your miracle. Things that you have been praying for so long, God is here and he's got a storehouse of blessings waiting to pour out upon you. Hallelujah. Water break. Twenty twenty, best year. And you've got God working in this place right now. I'm telling you, God's working right now. In every person's life. There's not one person in here that God's not doing a work in your life. So let's use this for an example. We got Brother Darren over here. God God's doing a work in your life. 
And at the exact same time, he's doing a work in your life. And at the exact same time, he's doing a work in your life. And at the exact same time, God's doing a work in your life. And over here, God's doing a work in your life. And God is all the time, he's all the time just reaching out for people. And he's healing you and he's delivering you and he's doing this for you. And he's, and he's blessing you over here. And God is doing all of this. And all of a sudden, you have a no good, dirty, blind to this world. Sinner walks into the door and he says, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And all of a sudden, even though he's still working in your life, his attention is now focused on this one that has just walked in. And he says, I've got somebody in my sights now. And somebody's going to walk out of here different the way that they came in. You don't have to leave the same way that you came in. God is fighting for us. He is on our side. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even when I don't see it, he's working. Even when I don't feel it, he's working. He never stops. He never stops working. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Somebody ought to praise the Lord right now. Somebody ought to praise the Lord right now. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm talking about somebody that would get so desperate for God. So desperate for God. Just a few chapters before, you see where... Jesus is going through another multitude, another crowd of people, maybe talking about him, maybe talking about how good the tuna fish sandwich was. There's no telling. I don't know the story. But then in this whole crowd of people, there's this woman that has an issue of blood. If I could just be touched the hem of his garment. I'll be made whole. It was an act of faith. She already spoke it out. She already knew. But it was the act of faith that was coupled with desperation that drove her to the feet of Jesus. She touched the hem of his garment. And it says that whenever she touched him, he stopped. And he looked at his disciples. He said, who touched me? Who touched me? Well, Lord, the people are thronging you. People are every, people are everybody's touching you. He said, "No, somebody touched me, for I perceive that virtue has left my body." You don't have an issue that's so great that God cannot meet that need. You don't have an issue so great that God cannot supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory. Whenever God stands still. See, you think that you have a problem in your life that you think that, that you cannot be forgiven of that, that problem. You think that you've gone too far. But there's a woman by the name of Mary Magdalene who was a prostitute with seven devils in her. But she found her way at the feet of Jesus. She's the one that you would see who would cry and wash his feet with her tears and dry them with her hair. This is the one. She was so desperate for a change in her life. Hallelujah. We need to get so desperate for God. We need to be so desperate for a change. You see, when people, they, they, they refuse to come to church. And I know we've all invited people. To come to church. Come to church. Be with me. And, and you tell them about the power of the Holy Ghost. And with the things that God can do in their life. Oh, you, 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 you know what they do. They come up with an excuse. And the reason why that they're not changed is because they're not desperate for a change in their life. You see, they want to hold on to the sins. They want to hold on to the pleasures of this world. They want to hold, it on, hold on to it. And they refuse to let it go. People must be so desperate. Change in their life.
just before I got in the church, I didn't do anything bad. I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. I didn't carouse around. I didn't do all that. But I remember the night when God began to deal with my heart. And I would pr pray, Lord, forgive me of my sins. And the enemy would place a thought in my mind that said, you will never be forgiven of the things that you've done. And I prayed again. I said, it is not good enough. I said, Lord, forgive me for the things that I've done. And, he said, and that voice came to me again that says, you will not be forgiven. And I said, well, it ain't good enough. And I prayed it again. Lord, forgive me of my sins. And I heard that voice again. And it stopped. And it says, you will. And it stopped. And I heard a voice from heaven that spoke into my spirit that says, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. And my cousin would begin to invite me to church. And I was like those other people that I would invite. I got an excuse. I can't make it today. But then God started dealing with my heart. And I would go to church and I would sit there at the church. And I, and I was about halfway back on, on this side of the church. And, and I would hold on to the chair in front of me. And, and I would say, God, I want the Holy Ghost. And the Lord would speak to me and he says, if you want it, you go to the front. And you get it. And I prayed it again. Lord, I want the Holy Ghost. And he says, if you want it, you go to the front and get it. And I didn't. I let this service go on. And the next service came around and I prayed it again. Lord, I want the Holy Ghost. And he said to me again, he says, if you want it, you go to the front and you get it. And all of a sudden, this crowd of people began to just walk up and they congregated into the middle of the church and they were all coming up to get prayer. And I picked the biggest, baddest dude in the room. I mean, he had a ponytail down his back. He was a, he was a drummer at a nightclub. And I said, God, if, I said, if, and I pointed him out, I said, if he will go to the front, I will go. Guess what he did? Not quite like that, but yes. And my cousin, she was sitting right beside me. And she got up and she walked behind me and she stood at the back of this crowd. And I said, Lord, if she can do it, I can do it. And so I went and I stood at the back of this crowd, about halfway to the back of the church. And I said, Lord, this is as far up as I can go. He said, no, it's not. And all of a sudden, that crowd of people just split down the middle. Wasn't even looking at me down the middle and then all of a sudden people looked back at me and says you coming I guess I am and when I got up there the pastor my pastor he looked at me and he says you want the Holy Ghost I was desperate for a change I needed a change in my life I needed a change in my world and I said, yes, I want it. He says, well, lift up your hands. You're about to get it. And as soon as I lifted up my hands, I began to lean back. And the people were holding me. Oh, of course, shout out my hug. And God began to fill me with the Holy Ghost. Today can be your day. Today can be your day. Hallelujah. Just get desperate for God. I refuse to stay the same way that I came in to this place. Hallelujah. Respond to the Holy Ghost right now. Respond to the call of God right now. Hallelujah. For the Holy Ghost is drawing you nigh unto Him. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the Lord is nigh unto them that have a broken heart and saveth those of a contrite spirit. God loves that broken heart. He loves something to fix. He loves something to make new. And today can be your day if you will just respond to it. If you will come to the altar today and listen to the voice of God, 
God will change your world. God will make you into a new creature. And God will do the miraculous in your life today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Jesus is in this room. Jesus is. 